The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm that sweet baby brother in 30 Under 30 Media, Luminary Griffin McElroy. Just sounds like you're scatting. Do you know who did that? Scat man. John what? John Williams, that's right. John Good job, Travis. the scat man Williams. John, John Williams, feet the scat man. Happy birthday, John Williams, turned 86, still cranking out the What hits. is this intro? It is an intro about the Olympics. Folks, the time is the si- time to sign up for the Olympics is uh, drawing close. Uh, you, you don't have much time left if you want to sign up to do an event. Um, some of the events are already ended, so those would be a little tougher to get yeah, into. Those, but you, no, they, can, they can retroactively get you in. Talk to Troy. Yeah, Troy talk can to do Troy that. at Troy. the gate. He's got the red backpack. And do- talk to him and say, I want to do the big jump. And Troy will say, well, they already did the big jump. And then you say, please. And he says, all right, get up there. Then you do it the best anyone's ever done it. They go and they mm-hmm. take the gold medal away from Germany. Yeah. And they're like, sorry, sorry, Griffin did better at the big jump. He was a walk up. And then you tell everybody the story about Troy and Troy is fired. Yes, because rules are rules. <laughs> yes. Troy, but, but they can't take jumps. your gold away from they you. They cannot That's take it. Well, loophole. they can take it away from whoever did legally win it and give it to the walk up. And yeah. there's no really no time limit. I actually, um, I got uh, Christy Yamaguchi's gold medal uh, from uh, what was that Nagano? I think. I, and this was like three weeks ago. So it's it, amazing how few people take advantage of all the rules loopholes in the Olympics. There's a I, lot. I was reading a book by Matthew Lesko about all the rules that are just left <laughs> on the table that nobody claims. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you hold an event in your backyard and call it the Olympics and you win one of the events, they have to give you a gold medal, like an official one. Did you know that? And then you can just turn around and you shouldn't because it's, you know, a nation's pride. But you just go sell that dang thing for probably like 200 bucks. No problem. Did um, you know that you can go and compete in the Olympics as your own sovereign nation? Now, here's the thing. Let me be clear. It's not as easy as it sounds because you do have to establish your own government and like uh, your own Magna Carta or declaration or what have you. Uh, it does have to be recognized by the UN. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can just go and be like the nation state of Griffin, you yeah. know, and just compete as Griffin. I've been thinking uh, a, a lot about what event I want to do this year because I did miss the big jump and it's such a hassle finding Troy because sometimes he doesn't have the fucking backpack on. And I think I might do uh, Tony Hawk's downhill jam. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and this is his new event that he has going on based on the very good 2006 video game. And it's sort of a mix of uh, jump, ski, slalom, stunt, mm-hmm. There's a and then you halfway down there's a half pipe, and then at the end you withdraw the rifle you've had on your back the whole time and you shoot some uh, cans out of the air that Tony Hawk throws up there for you. I love it. Um, that's that's a. Uh... That's interesting. I'm going. Oh, to also be... you have to cro- you have to cross country ski to the top of the hill, but that's not really part of the race. That's just to uh, get there, right? I'm actually going to be speed running Taboo the Sixth Sense for the NES. Uh-huh. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, and it's not. That's a tarot card simulator, so it's not necessarily going to be uh, c- competitive. I guess you have to wait for the medals to be distributed in the coming years as you see whose reading of the cards was the most accurate. Right. That's So it takes a while to get it, but it, you know, it's it's an investment. And it's this so year, subjective the scoring on that one. I feel like I'm always getting boned. That's why I like the downhill jam. It's just me, my board, my cross-country skis, my guns, 
and Tony's Cants. I think this uh, this time I'm gonna. My wife and I have been training. Teresa and I've been training really hard uh, in the competitive couples asynchronous napping. Yeah. Um, where yeah. it's like I'm gonna nap now, and then I'll get up and I'll take care of the baby, and then you can nap. Yeah, and the longer um, you can spread that out, um, the 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 better that is for you. I thought I was gonna end up on the podium because I went down at like 9 a.m. one day early mm-hmm. nap, and Rachel didn't nap until 11 p.m. And what happened? I didn't win anything, Travis. Thanks for fucking rubbing it in. Well, wow. you started the story. Yeah, I know. And then I didn't have an ending for it. And I didn't think anybody was going to call me on my bullshit. But here we are. I might also do curling. Yeah. I forgot that this occurred until... I, I, this is kind of a persistent delight that pops up uh, every time the Olympics comes around. Um, is uh, that there's one called Skeleton. Uh-huh. Which is fun. There's like bobsled and downhill alpine and skeleton yeah. <laughs> that's just like xylophone playing but it's your own ribs yeah right you got to play your own rib no it's it's what's great about it is it's basically like bobsledding but it's the tiniest possible sled yeah so it's like this heightened awareness of like uh yeah i will just name it after the thing that i'm gonna destroy <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going down. I love, yes, perfect. somebody looked at uh, Bob Sled and said, mm, "Not dangerous enough." Well, not I have this enough. luge. No, no, no. I want to be a centimeter off the ice with nothing around me. Um, yeah. I wanted a sport where if I sneeze while I'm doing it, I will perish. <laughs> that sounds very, <laughs> sounds very, very fun to me. Um, hey, I thought of a really fucking good parody song <laughs> this morning while we were watching the Olympics. Can I tell you it? Yeah, please. It goes like, um, so I'm Peridor. I'm a loser, baby. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. Sorry, the microphone I have sometimes has trouble with the like quality and fidelity. So I'm worried that you're hearing it and you actually think I'm doing a pitch perfect version of Beck's um, loser. But I'm instead of saying loser, it's lo- uh-huh. it's loser. The- and then what's the next line? Uh, so why don't you thrill me? Because you're, it's such a you're so excited to be out there. Uh huh. So Al, get at me. Um, <laughs> and Al takes our calls. He was in our TV show. I'm assuming he would take our call, right? Yeah. I have to imagine. Yeah. Hey, brothers, I have a moral. I was dilemma. talking to Al Jarreau, Actually, he's getting oh. into the game. <laughs> I think he passed Let away. Let your losing down. Yeah. Let your losing here to stay. <laughs> Make it easy, easy. Let your losing down. Hey, brothers, I have a moral dilemma. You don't, I have get, to, been... you don't get to do your Algero enough. My fucking dope-ass <laughs> Algero. I'm so glad. I have 393 episodes. You've been hiding your light under a bushel. To finally get to do my fucking great Algero. <laughs> Glad it has brought such a tickle to my heart that you were able to do your Al Jarreau finally. Yeah, we lost Al Jarreau. Oh my god, it was last exactly year. one year upon you hearing this. Holy listener. shit, exactly one what year. What a touching ago. tribute! This is our touching tri- This is our touching accidental tribute to Al Jarreau, who is very good at singing. Hey, brothers, I have a moral dilemma. I have been debating whether or not to put a Nintendo Switch on my wedding registry. My fiance is on board, as she is the one who suggested it, so no worries there. (laughs) My problem is that I feel if people see an expensive toy on there, like the Switch, they'll feel we really don't need anything and not give us as much presents. I am sadly against putting one on for this reason. Am I making too big of a deal out of it? That's from Fiscal <laughs> Fiance. You know, mm. you, you can work around this just by asking for like a $250 GameStop gift card on your, <laughs> on your registry. I, although I don't think that necessarily skirts this dilemma. Um, Could you ask for a gift card for like, the exact price of the Switch for like Target or Walmart yeah, or something? There's other places you can, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know me, I'm brand loyal. Once you're of in course. the fuck, once you, once that GameStop, like, <laughs> once you're in the fuck, once you're in the, f- <laughs> what, the what? You said once you're in the fuck, and once you're in the fuck, once you're in the fuck of games. I'm just saying, once you're in the fuck, you can't really get out. Hey man, I'm at GameStop. Well, how's it going? I'm deep in the fuck. It's I'm brutal over fuck, here, bro. man. I'm way down deep. I'm just saying, you sling enough reservations, you sling enough Game Informer subscriptions, you can't just get that out of your blood. 
You know? I mean, I did legit last night have a dream where I worked at Best Buy again. I have that about once a week. Yeah. It gets, uh, I comes haven't worked those... at Best Buy since 2008. It has been a solid decade. It's the lunar cycle, bro. Those blue shirts coming. So, so you, could say, you could say that your dream is to work at Best Buy again. Literally. No, Literally. it's often an anxiety dream. Okay. No, I got you. <laughs> In which um, everything has gone wrong, and I've had once again to turn to the big blue embrace I think that I think it's fine to do a, a cute one on your your registry wedding or baby or what have you because a lot of times I look at somebody's registry and I think God I don't want to get him something so bore like this yeah. is all so bore even though I'm not getting it it bores me to like look at the page and think about it and then click it like oh yeah you can steam on your shirts every time you steam a shirt you could think of me no just like but like switch and be like hey. That's fun. Thank you. That's it all like feels, a fun gift. I'm excited. Most, most of it feels so perfunctory. Like you see like a, a thing for like, oh, we need nipples. And it's like, I can get you nipples. And that fit point is just like, yeah, I got you. I got you some rags. And it's, I know you need, and that's not a joke. You need uh, hundreds and hundreds of rags for, for a baby. Not so much for a wedding. I forgot what the question was about. But if I see a switch on there, I know that if you, rec- that's the only thing on there that you really want to get get the other stuff you yeah. need to get and i think i would be i i mean i'd probably want to split it with some folks because it's it would probably be one of the more uh expensive items on the list but like that's that's i would know that i'm getting you something that you're going to be very excited about which is like the sure. point of gift giving so like, I, I, I do understand this question though because we like i i have encountered this many times in my life where someone will say like so what do you want what can i get you and you say something like you know, pretty out there, pretty like, I'll tell you what I want. I, I What I really, really want, a couple Chia pets. And they're like, no. no. And I'm like, oh, that was what I wanted, but I guess Damn. you know better. I think the Switch is also helpful here because it is such a strong experience for two players. Anywhere that you and Ooh. your new spouse are out and about, you can enjoy some Puyo Puyo Tetris or what have yeah, you, some super clips. There's the Dr. Phil uh, marriage counseling game. That's, and yeah. That yeah. one's really hot. It's rated Who will M. let go first? It's rated M for mature because of just all the cussing that Dr. Phil does. Uh, you gotta like, fucking oh, love each other. You gotta I don't know fucking what Dr. love Phil each other. Sounds like. Oh man, I know it's gonna fix your marriage. I've got it all figured out. Is uh, you gotta plug in the Yoshi amiibo. <laughs> Many games. Do you know on the back in the day when we were trying to get this show going? I made business cards oh, for my brother, my brother and me that I left all over town. And on them, it had a web address where you could listen to the show. And it had a quote ascribed to Dr. Phil. And the quote was, it's like listening to three invisible Dr. Phil's. <laughs> that was my, I said, I did that. And I was like, hmm, good enough for a business card. Let's go ahead and get uh, 500 of these and get the word out about this show. And I, and I guess you look at us today and I guess it worked. So what yeah. I'm saying to you is, do exactly that. I showed a friend that business card and they expressed concern that he might sue us for attributing a quote to him that he did not say. And my response was, can you think of the publicity? How yeah, amazing would that be? the best possible yeah. thing. I think put this switch on your registry. I think it's fine. Yeah. I don't think, and, and if anybody sees this and says, well, I'm not going to get them a present, you uninvite them from the wedding because they sound like a real square and it sounds like they hate Mario and his brother Luigi and their best friend Yoshi. So. Do you think Yoshi is equal best friends with Mario and Luigi, or do you think it's the kind of thing where, like, Mario is friends with Yoshi first, and, like, yeah, he gets along with Luigi, but if push came to shove, you know whose side he'd be on. Okay, who is Mario's better friend, uh-huh. Luigi or Yoshi? Let's take a moment and think oh, about this. Oh, shit. Or, or Toad. Where does it fall? Okay. Toad is not. Were, nobody, it, Toad, Toad is, is nobody's friend. Toad is tolerated. <laughs> if, to, if, Toad is tolerated if, because they need him around harvest time to pull all the onions out fast. If Mario is the Vin, Vinny Chase of the Mario World Entourage. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm the, not doing this with you. Then I think Luigi's drama, right? Because they're brothers. You're saying Luigi's like the heat that everybody's no. all in demand for That's Luigi? Vinny. Vinny. Oh, okay, Vinny. Okay, Mario okay. is Vinny. Johnny Drama, his older uh, half brother who once had a TV show but now isn't. Oh, can, in uh, can Bowser be Turtle? <laughs> no, I think Bowser would probably be. He looks like Parami a fucking Jivins. turtle. <laughs> Might be Parami Jivens. Can we not have Parami involved in this project? I don't think Parami's in this pro- No, Parami's fine. He did the, <laughs> the bizarro <laughs> version of Jeremy Piven. Awesome, dude. 
<laughs> and so then the question is, is Toad E or is Yoshi E? I think Yoshi would be E and Toad would probably I'm gonna be I'm just going to start reading the next Yahoo. But um, don't you think? And Travis can thank continue you. going and the, the crosstalk will be unbearable. Um, but here's one. But uh, then who's the director from guy? Merritt oh, Palmer. Walsh. Thank you, Ooh. Merritt Palmer. It's from Yahoo Answers user Ooh. Collection who asks. Walsh might be Waluigi? How to get Pac-Man dots off monitor. <clears throat> these. And then a bunch of periods. Uh-huh. I want I want to eat these. This is a great point. As long as we're going to talk about video games a whole bunch this episode. I play, I have a trouble. I have a trouble playing uh, Pac-Man's little quest that he goes on. And Ms. Pac-Man. Sometimes, um, Griffin, I can't tell if you're still reading the Yahoo or if we've spiraled into Griffin's brain now. No, we're in here, in here, in my in my mind, um, because I watched the Pac Man eat all these dots, mm-hmm. and I'm excited for him. But it, you do it enough, and you start to get jealous because you start to wonder, like, what do they? What do they taste like? What do they taste like? What is the texture like? How is he not? Is he not getting full? I've made him eat so many of these dots. Are they not filling? Are they like little pop chips? And then I, I, was, I always assumed they were like uh, corn pops, like the cereal corn pops. Like mm-hmm. that's what I imagine they tasted like. Mm. You get jealous from seeing the dots, and then soon that turns into anger, and then you just run Pac-Man right into those murderous sure. ghouls just so um, he can feel the sting of death. And you can feel some sort of release <laughs> from this this cycle of jealousy that you're, that you're stuck in. You don't in. know how to get to the dots, but at least you know Pac-Man is not going to eat them all before uh-huh. you figure it out. Right, you are need the, to leave those dots. Do you think the dots are maybe like some kind of prescription medication that Pac-Man has to take? <laughs> I cannot imagine a dosage, a doctor in the world that would prescribe a dosage that's just like as many as you can eat before the ghosts kill you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can I do a smash on the monitor to get the dots out? How do you mean? Think of the arcade cabinet for Pac-Man. Okay, and slow down, have, slow down. Okay, you have start button, you have coin slot, you have uh-huh. a Pac-Man move stick. Yeah. And that's more or less it. And then you have the art, and you can't eat that. And then you have the monitor, and that's where the game lives inside of that. Yes. And it just seems like if... If this person wants to get the dots off monitor, uh-huh. um, you you need to get in the monitor somehow. So if you wait, and I think you do it when at the beginning of the level when there are the most dots and the fewest ghosts, because that's the problem. You, you can do a big smash right on the monitor uh-huh. and get all the dots out and be careful of the ghosts. That's a that's a that's the only problem with my plan. Is I'm seeing it right now. If I smash up the monitor with my big fist. And if then you I get wreck those, it. Yeah, and I get those dots out. Are the ghosts are the ghosts gonna get me? That's is the, Pac-Man gonna get you? If I was Pac-Man, I'd be very upset that you did that and took my dots away. Yeah, you got into his natural environment and you took his food away. And Pac-Man's a big wild beast. And you know, fuck, I've been watching a lot of Blue Planet, and you make an excellent point, Groovin, in that yes, Pac-Man wants to eat the dots, but the ghosts want to eat Pac-Man. I should be rooting for the the ghosts here. It's the circle of life. Yeah, those ghosts have to eat, and obviously they didn't, and that's why they already died. And we shouldn't right. even talk about the fact that how did Pinky and Blinky and Inky and Stinky and all them get killed in a terrible passion? The game never really explores that. Like they were just they're like, actually oh. the ghosts of every Mario and Luigi who's died in a Mario game. Whoa, whoa, yeah, damn. crossover! Hank, big news! I don't want to talk about Pac-Man anymore. What about? But I didn't even get to my whole thing about Adam Sandler's Pixels, Justin. I didn't even get to talk about Pixels. Is it you say that? Doesn't that cover it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Back when I was about seven, I was at a dinner in my hometown. Nope. <laughs> Just the Let's, one in in there. One more again. <laughs> Back when I was about seven, I was at a diner in my hometown, and I was enjoying a crisp, tasty water with a lemon wedge. Hey, folks, this is a quick break for me to you. When you get a drink at a restaurant, even if you're getting a, a soda, go ahead and get a, ask a lemon wedge in there. You're going to be shocked at how much that spices up that cola. Or water. It's a it's a it's a real treat, and sometimes it may look at you a little funny if you ask for it with that coke. But trust me on this one. I remember taking the lemon wedge out, tasting it, and saying to no one in particular, "I love lemons." A complete stranger leaned over to me and said, 
if you eat too many lemons in a day, you'll die, and then turn back to their meal. To this day, I can't enjoy a nice lemon without the thought of imminent death looming over me. Why did this complete stranger say this to me? What do they know that we don't? And how can I finally get back to my pre-lemon-fearing days? And that's from Lemon Dread. The thing about it is, if you eat too much of anything, you'll die. Because how are we defining too much? And I would submit it's the number it takes to kill you. Like, that's too much lemons would kill you. So, yes, but too much of, like, Couldn't waffles, kill, not me. serrano peppers, marmalade. I could eat a million lemons and do you not think die. You could eat a million How lemons? many lemons? Okay, do you think you could eat enough lemons to kill you before you passed out? Hmm. This is a weird line that I don't necessarily want to explore. This body horror, this seven esque gluttony this man with versus lemons. Food. Yeah. Um. What? Okay, this person said this to plant a flag in your memory with their face on it so that uh-huh. one day you would write into an advice show and talk about this strange thing that they said to you one time. This they person was constant. a They are a performance mm-hmm. artist is what they are. Oh. And they, this is a very, you are their most successful exhibit um, because I, I don't think you need to worry about eating a lemon and passing away from it. I literally don't know what else to say about this do you, question. Do you guys, do you have any memories from childhood of someone? So I, I remember once, so I took uh, Ritalin and then uh, later different versions of ADD uh, medication growing up. And I remember once a health teacher, mind you, now this is at the time when health teacher was synonymous with gym coach, but a health teacher telling me in elementary school, because I took one of my pills without a drink, told me that if I continued to take pills without a drink, it would get stuck in my throat and give me throat cancer. How did that? Wow. That's um, a, that's this, a good health teacher. Yeah, that's maybe the worst possible subject teacher to tell you that falsehood. Yes. Um, this is the same health teacher, I believe, that because I used to write notes on my hand in ink that I would get uh, po- hand ink poisoning. Hand cancer. I would get hand the, cancer. Sort of a one one arrow in their quiver, it sounds like. Um, you know, how did you, I wish you had told me how you responded to this person. That's the thing I really want to know from this story, because if somebody told me this, I think I would just try to make myself as small as possible until the situation resolved itself. <laughs> of course. They, they probably reacted the same way every child does appropriately when a stranger talks to them in the silence and uh, returning to your business. People yeah. gotta be careful what you say to kids. They remember, once I was at Bob Evans' farm and an old man... <laughs> Once I was at Bob Evans' farm. <laughs> had to start that. And take a run I gotta up start to over. Sim. I got to start over. I lost my mo. I once I was at Bob Evans' farm, and an old man couldn't get his uh, change out of the soda machine. And I, I, I went over, and I was probably 10, and I went over, and I helped this old man. I got his change out, and I handed it to him. And he said, thanks, young man. I'll dance at your wedding. And I had... <laughs> And I was like fucking so tripped out for the rest of the day. Like, what does he know that I don't? Why would he say this to me? How will this old man find me? How will he know I'm getting married? I didn't give him my name. How will he know to find me? And for, I would say like, I mean, I remember I'm 37 years old now. I remember this moment, like with perfect clarity where I was when this adult said this weird shit to me. Can we please just like say normal things to kids and reduce our idioms and our metaphors when talking to children. Did he turn into a beam of light after he said that and shoot into the heavens? No. Did no, you see him at your wedding? Drank his, his drank his cherry Coke. Oh, he would have been long dead. He was an old, old man, and I was not married for two decades later, okay. so um, I'm, I'm sure. Okay, but, but, but be honest with me. It. On, for a second, Justin, for a second, on your wedding day, did you look? You look around. Hundred percent guaranteed. No question. This is a, also another vivid memory. Is being towards the end of the the <laughs> ceremony and having the fleeing thought, like, huh, didn't see him. Hmm. <laughs> huh. All right. Well, enjoy <laughs> enjoy your change. I guess. I think. And then Sydney it- transformed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My crane. Why? <laughs> is it? That's what that song's about. Is it a? Is it a possible? I think maybe just. 
definitely don't talk to a strange child who says something at a restaurant in the booth behind you like i love lemons that was the thing that activated this person's mind to say like "Mm, my turn to speak like that's (laughs) why we were uh we were at a grocery store yesterday and they had a cart at the front that had i've never seen these before they had um a two like a plastic seat in the front so that you could strap two kids into. It elongated it by about a foot and a half, so it, it piloting it is a utter disaster. And it's designed for two children. But Charlie saw it was like hell yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I'm gonna ride in that weird carnival shopping cart. And we didn't want to because they're miserable to push around, and also she's one child, and I couldn't deal with the pressure of people looking at me like, huh. Two seater for one kid. Hmm, interesting. So we were arguing with her for eh, it felt like about three hours, um, trying to get her out. And this other woman who had a daughter roughly Charlie's age leaned over to Charlie and said, Actually, that one's got a flat tire. And that worked instantly. Mm, see, and that woman shoot. is my true homie for life. Yeah. I tried to give her a blood debt, and she was I I didn't know exactly how it worked. So I ended up just kind of walking away. But like I will never forget this person. And that is a rare instance You're where, right. like, maybe this person, what I'm getting at is maybe this person saw something <laughs> on your parents' face where he's like, again, with the fucking lemons. <laughs> this kid, this kid always eats lemons and it's so weird. And the person at the other table is like, no problem. I have got your back. <laughs> but they didn't. Uh, le- let me take care of this one for you. I have, I have just the right thing to say. And then they went back to their home and they looked in the magic mirror and they said, am I free yet? Am I free from the they, curse? Have I saved another child? They went back to their orange farm. It was like, fuck yeah, I did it again. <laughs> another one. <laughs> no, they got it. another one, guys. We're going to be king of Citrus Mountain before you know it. <laughs> are you th- are you saying that oranges yep. and lemons are, are, are competitors in some way? They well, occupy yeah. two completely different sort of what, eating experience fields. What I'm saying is if you if the custom was to have an orange slice on top of every fancy drink you ever had, mm. that'd be a pretty good day for the orange people. We've yeah, got Blue Moon. How do we expand? We could get into water. No, everybody knows what goes Wait, yeah? I've got an idea. What if little guerrilla marketing? Yep. We tell I go people. St- <laughs> I go from soda fountain to soda fountain just yelling that lemons are bad. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a pretty good idea, Mark. Get out there, Mark. Get out there, Mark. You start, and we'll follow you. Grassroots, Um, Mark. Street team. I'm going to take a uh, quick break now. Get our ducats in a row. That's not a saying. Anyway, it's somebody's. I liked it, though. It was almost a turn of phrase. It was good, yeah. Hey, I want to tell everybody all about MeUndies. Me undies, they make underwear for Whoa, TMI, man. Yeah, you... <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, what's TMI? Uh, too many ideas. So, uh, that's me... worse. That's yeah, grosser. It's worse. Yeah. yeah, so, um, no, 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 hold on. No, give us another one. No. In it we got to move on. We got to move on. Too many intros. I don't want to have to do another make good like last week. Okay. <laughs> um, MeUndies offers the just the most comfortable underwear of all time. They also offer matching pairs, which are a unique, fun gift for you and your Valentine, or you and your whoever, your best best bud, you and your, your boss. No, nope. Your boss. Your no, nope, no, no. Nope. Your principal. Nope. Um, they are the perfect balance of comfortable fit and exciting prints to help you and your Valentine look great. Don't spend another Valentine's Day giving the same old gift. Check out MeUndies.com and find the best match for your match. Uh, they're, they're, we have a couple matching pairs from, from MeUndies, and it's a lot of fun. Wait, hold on. Just, we do? No, I mean, um, my wife. <laughs> okay. And they're they're really fun to wear. I also like right now, actually, I'm wearing their lounge pants, which uh, I don't think are included in this particular bullet point. But I can't say enough about these very comfortable lounge pants. Uh, All of it's made from the softest materials on Earth. Uh, They're talking three times softer than cotton soft. This Valentine's Day, get your partner a fun, thoughtful gift that's comfortable for the both of you. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive Valentine's Day offer for our listeners. For any first time purchasers. When you purchase MeUndies matching pairs, you get 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear, they offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. So to get your 20% off your matching pairs, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash my brother. That's MeUndies.com slash my brother. This will be the best Valentine's Day gift you will give. Start matching your bottom half to your better half. Go to MeUndies.com slash my brother right now. 
Uh, Count it. That was really good, Griffin. You did a great good job. Good job, Griffin. Oh, I'm come so on, please. <laughs> please, you flatter me. <laughs> Trav, do you want to read this one? Sure I do. Posted rates have gone up again. That's all it says. Weird. Anyways, let's stamp some. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> this is, my name is Greg Williamson with a special <laughs> message on my brother, my brother. Postage <laughs> rates have gone up again. Bye. <laughs> let stamps.com keep your rates down with postage discounts up to 40%. Discounts you can't even get at the post office. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, package, and class of mail using your own computer and printer. Then the mail carrier picks it up. No more trips to the post office. Wham, bam, totally done, easy. We, uh, you won't have to worry about letters anymore. Well, you I don't do spend to... that much time worrying about letters. Oh, it's <laughs> my every day, three hours a day, in one solid chunk, start to finish, one o'clock to four o'clock every day. What am I going to do with these letters? And now I know um, stamps.com. You can enjoy the stamps.com. You took too long. Stamps.com ah, service with it. a special offer that includes a four week trial plus postage and a digital scale. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in my brother. That's stamps.com. Enter my brother. <laughs> what? <laughs> Enter my brother. Oh, just, Justin, come on. Just gross. Like a, no, I meant like an Osmosis Jones way. No, um, you did. I got it. I have a, uh, a, a message here. Se uh, it's about Cedric. No, I said that. Egg. You said Cedric. No, no he I said didn't. Cedric. I said Cedric. Thank you, Travis. It's All a dream right. folk start band. A, start over. Start over. I fucked I, it. Why do I have I to start no, over? I fucked it up. Fu yeah, I'm the one that fucked it up. <laughs> so I'm not starting over. What order did I leave off on? Band. <laughs> Based in Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. Cedric is a dream folk band based in Chicago, Illinois. Using their roots in folk music and influences from alt rock and electronica, Sedgwick explores emotionally stirring themes via complex vocal harmonies and sweeping symphonic soundscapes that has been described as haunting, evocative, beautiful music by WGN Radio. Listen to the album Collapse Now and find Sedgwick on social media. That's at S-E-D-G-E-W-I-C-K band. That's their Twitter handle. Listen to Cedric's full length studio album. I did say full length. And I'm you also did say again. Cedric that time. That, Cedric. Was Cedric. That, one, that one was Cedric. <laughs> it's Sedgwick. Listen to Sedgwick's Listen to Sedgwick's full-length <laughs> studio album Collapse on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, and find out more at SedgwickMusic.com. Okay, I do. I figured out the problem. Full-length <laughs> Sedgwick. Sedgwick. Do you like music? Sedgwick, we're very Sedgwick sorry. Sedgwick sounds like you're saying Cedric with a baby accent, and I understand that now. Yeah, I listen, get it. This is, and that's not on Cedric. It's a great name, and it's a uh, it, this 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 music does sound evocative and powerful. It's just we we fucked it up, and then we kind. And went down our own little hole. We we're made a hole, people. and then we we are baby but people, and we made a hole. You'll remember it now. It's Sedgwick, not Cedric. And think... I'm not speaking with a baby accent. They're two <laughs> different words. Um, I have a message here for Jessica, and it's from Graham, who says, "Dearest Magpie, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm so lucky to have you as my partner, best friend, wife, and baby mama." <laughs> Why are we all incapable of reading these like normal human beings? My best friend, wife, and baby mama. <laughs> I'm grateful you said I will all those years ago. Thank you for being mine, for the family we've chosen and built, and for all our days together. Love forever and always. G. P.S. Great job. I didn't even say that part right. Okay. Jessica, Graham, congratulations on your uh, momentous love. And it's the kind of stuff that's going to move mountains. And that's all I have to say about that. And it's, I'm really glad that Jessica, when asked, will you help me hide this body, said, I will. Yeah, sure. She's, uh, she's always down. She knows the best spots. She knows the game. Griffin, read this one too. You just keep doing such a good job reading. <clears throat> let me prepare. Let me moisten my instrument. Oh, God. <laughs> Were you reacting to your own phrase there? Yeah. Here's one for Jay, and it's from Tosca, who says, Hey, Jay, happy belated candle nights. It was a pretty belated candle nights. Thank you for being one of my, thank you for being one of my close friends and introducing me to these good, good brothers and the Adventure Zone. Looking forward to more gaming hijinks, dumb references, and memes, childhood crime stories, and hotel wrestle battles. Love you, dork. P.S. Is this why you wanted me to read this one? It is, yes. 
Oh my wow motion Daru. That's you are already dead, and I believe it's from Fist of the North Star. Okay. That one that one's that's fine. That one's fine. That one's not yeah. Oh oh my wa motion Daru. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm so, did you include that so that one of us would say it and then get dunked on on Twitter by people who are like, nah, that's actually you've mispronounced the Fist of the North Star quote uh, so, so badly. And now I'm uh, boycotting the show. I'm Hal Lublin. I'm Danielle Radford. I am Michael Eagle. And we are the hosts of Tights and Fights, Maximum Fun's newest podcast dedicated to all things wrestling. We'll be talking about Sasha Banks, the women's revolution, Sasha Banks, the brand split, and Sasha Banks' wigs. And we'll also be talking about wrestler fashion. Some wrestlers wear too many clothes. Some wrestlers don't wear enough clothes at all. And I'll be doing impressions of all your favorite wrestlers. New episodes Thursdays on Maximum Fun or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, yeah, dig it. Tice and Fights Podcast. Tice and Fights. Here's a Yahoo that was sent in by Morgan Davey. Keep it wavy, Morgan Davey. It's from Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something has gone wrong, but I've got to refresh it. And then it's uh, still wrong, so I'm going to say this is Flo from Progressive Insurance. If you could speak as soon as you were born, what would you first words be? You've just been born. What are your first words you say? Thanks. And Justin, I know that this is something hot, hot, hot on your mind. Yeah. Is it strange that we haven't discussed the fact that uh, in like f- five days or four days, four you days. and Sydney are expecting? It's nobody's business. I guess that's, I mean, it's going to be our listeners' business because we're going to have a live show for you next week because Justin's taking some time off. Um, Yeah, just for the baby stuff. Um, um, Yeah, a new baby coming. (laughs) New (laughs) baby (laughs) coming. (laughs) Drops this Tuesday. I wanted to do, I wanted to reveal it on Insta, but I guess... (laughs) All right, are you gonna do like are. a name reveal like uh Kim Kardashian did? It's actually Paramy Jivens. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. Uh what so what is the if you speak as soon as you're born and you are able to speak and you've just been born and you pop right out and then what's the first words? What if babies could do this? What if babies had nine months to think of like a Dope entrance line, uh-huh. but then they couldn't speak again for you know eighteen months or whatever, following sort of the natural natural order of things. Oh man, wouldn't that suck if you pop out and you're like, "I'm so happy to boo here." I uh, fuck, <laughs> I blew it. Um, yeah. What if they just popped out and said, "I like a do what?" Oh my god, Travis is the best answer. It's fair. It's a very good answer. Ah oh, shit. Um. Before we jump in, I wanted to read a couple of these answers, because this is the most disappointed I've ever been in Yahoo, I think. And that's saying something, because even when I'm not doing this podcast or uh, interacting with this website, I am experiencing what I would call just sort of a constant low frequency disappointment at Yahoo Answers. This is the best answer. It was voted best answer. It's from Abby, who says, Please put me back in. I don't want to come into this world. You can't make me. Oh, wow. That's the best answer. Uh, T- two answers down. Jim G. Not the best answer. Sorry I'm late. I hit some traffic in the birth canal. Hey, mom. <laughs> hey, mom. Way I better. like the hey, mom at the end. Way the better. hey, mom's very good. Because that, that makes it seem like <laughs> the baby is addressing... The doctor first, like, yo, sorry, I'm late. Oh, hey, mom. It addresses two different audiences. It's a, it's a pretty good little joke construction there, Jim G. But it's not the best answer. No. Abby's is. The best answer is the first one every 90s comedian would think of. Uh, Put me back. It's not. Yeah. It's nothing. What if you, I think, okay, for this, for this example, I would have to think like me now as a baby being born where I, because if the baby was just born, sure they could speak English, they wouldn't know what anything is. So that doesn't work for the joke construction. So I would wait for some good entrance line, right? That I could respond to where like, they would say like- That's good. Uh, okay, he's coming. And I'd pop out and be like, that's what she said. You know, something like that. Okay, so kind of like one upping them. Yeah. That's, I like that. Something where I, I like could that. respond, or like pop out and be like, 
uh, I'll have what she's having. You know, something like that where I can really respond yeah. and nail yeah, the timing. I, yeah, if your mom is like moaning from labor pains and then you come out and you're like, I'll have what she's having. Like, that would be pretty that funny for a baby. That could be funny as do. fuck, dude. President what? Bartlett's first words on the West Wing are, I am the Lord your God, thou shalt worship no other God before me. Uh-huh. Would that be... I, a good uh, opening salvo like that. for a baby. Yeah, that that'd would be, be very commanding. You would run the room at that point, I think. What if it's three triplets all trying to deliver their jokes at the same time, but mm-hmm. the crosstalk makes it unbearable? And then it would be kind of like listening to my brother, my brother and me <laughs> as these babies show up, and they're all like, uh, my why I'll have what she's having. I'm the Lord your God. Like, oh, guys, oh, guys, yeah. guys, can we break these up? Can we separate Can we do these? one joke, one joke per joke, please? Um, could you do kind of a Joey Gladys thing? Like, cut it off, and you're looking at the umbilical cord. <gasps> oh, I cord. like that. Is yeah, that like fun? That what what if you went really topical? Because like, here's the thing: you're only gonna do it once, and you popped out and like, did you guys see the Late Show last night? And you just made it like really specific, but a good conversation starter too, a good icebreaker. That's good. I know. I think I know what mine would be. First, I'm gonna look at the um. The webcam in the nursery. Make sure the baby's not asleep. Okay, he's not. I think uh, the seed hits the egg, and then I am I exist <laughs> while I'm taking. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me think about what I'm saying. Uh huh. <laughs> well, I, no. Listen, life begins at a conception. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, listen. One thing we want to establish here on our podcast. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> listen, we're 393 episodes in. It should be clear by now. I okay. want the one thing I want is for our podcast to be entered as evidence in a Supreme Court deliberations. <laughs> I do want to go ahead and establish here, biblically speaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, right, you finally got to the twist. You finally got to the twist of our podcast. Every 390 fucking episodes, it's the twist. The I'm, turn. Just, I'm just saying, I have the thought, I know what I'm going to say, and then it's just waiting, the long, dark, damp wait, and it's just like, oh, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, and then out I come. As soon as the crown is out, I think I'm not even fully delivered. You hear me yelling, my name is Kid (laughs) Rock. And then I'm like, is Kid Rock still cool? And then the baby magic wears off. I can't talk anymore. But I didn't know. Like, no, Kid Rock, you don't. We don't really. We don't really. That would be so dope if you got that far. And then when you were like two and a half or three or however old your first words were kid rock like that's like such a long time for the drop to come but it's so worth it's it it's so uh well <laughs> it's 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 kind of worth it's a little bit worth it could you get do uh, uh what about i see you tremble with antissa and then three years later patient that could be very good too um i think that your tim curry impression i think you'd have time to get good at it in there um, what a fun, I just love making believe, don't you guys? <laughs> just saying, we got these brains for a reason, so to make up imaginations. Beautiful. Thank you, Griffin. Thank you, God, Thank you. for the imagination you gave me. Thank you. What about, I'm the baby, gotta love me? <laughs> I'm the baby, gotta love me, that's so good. Yeah, that's the one. I've showed enough videos of uh, baby Sinclair to Charlie at this point that she's like probably the only three-year-old on planet Earth that's deeply into dinosaurs. Why would you do that? YouTube. As an we, experiment, I think. I, she got she got a baby Sinclair toy for Christmas that we got off of eBay. It's gotta be one of like five left, right? Yeah, but definitely. That's the one toy I tell her to take really good care of because <laughs> daddy probably can't find another one of the, but, another baby Sinclair. But Justin, baby Sinclair is a character purely based off of being a baby who A, does not get along well with not the mama, and two is kind of a monster. Yeah, not now, a great. If baby. you think she has not come to me and say, "Daddy, let's play the game where I bang on your head, and then you say if you bang my head one more time, I'm gonna throw you across the room, and then you throw me across the room." Like, uh, no, sweetie, we're Does not that playing dinosaurs. In dinosaurs? That happens in dinosaurs. He throws his not... child. I he throws a... his child across the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been a dad for about fourteen months now. Yeah. That's like kind of day one stuff. Yeah. I'm not like, saying I'm 100 percenting this, but it's in one of the great clips. I mean, if you if you look at one of the great clips of oh, okay. Yeah, just found it. it's the first result. Uh here you go. We're just gonna this is probably the third time we've sent clips of the hit TV show Dinosaurs to each other. Um if you want to follow along at home, 
uh, YouTube.com slash watch question mark V equals U4. <laughs> Or just J-T-G Google, or just search not the five V capital X capital Y capital Q, and you can see clearly uh, here at the. It's very obvious at the seventeen second mark. Baby Sinclair is thrown across the room by Daddy. Baby Sinclair is fine, but that does happen in the hit TV show Dinosaur. Oh. Does the baby dinosaur and DJ Jazzy Jeff ever run into each other in the air? Like it happened again. <laughs> that would be so fresh. <laughs> And they trade, not. and they trade, but he would be killed, right? DJ Jesse Jeff would not last long <laughs> in this dinosaur-filled world. I don't necessarily <laughs> think he's got the skills required to if, not be destroyed by the dinosaur's powerful jaws. So should we do another question? Absolutely. Hi, brothers. I'm very quiet at work, and I haven't been there for long. I'm also much younger than everyone else at only 23. I sometimes think that my coworkers don't know how to take me. In a slow part of the day-to-day... My adult co-workers out of nowhere started assigning everyone Spongebob characters based Jesus on their personalities. Fuck. Okay. Oh, my God. When they got around to me, one of my co-workers yelled, Krabby Patty, and everyone just agreed? I'm so concerned as to what this means, because Krabby Patty isn't a character, thank you. It's just a sea hamburger? Should I quit now? What do I do? And that's from Confused Krabby Patty in Kansas City. That is very confusing. I would not know how to take this information either. Now. Is your real name something that rhymes with Krabby Patty, like Stabby Daddy? <laughs> and then the, it's the rhyme that is just kind of undeniable. And maybe the boss's name is Bung Bob. And so he, of course, got that designation. Bung Bob is a pretty good name. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't rhyme with sponge, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a slant rhyme. I, I, I think... I think it's pretty good. Wouldn't Sponge Rob rhyme better with SpongeBob? I think I'm gonna stick. What about Bung Rob? <laughs> we got. A, we rented. Um, there used to be a costume shop in town. We uh, for a, a theater thing once. We rented an unlicensed uh, SpongeBob uh, SquarePants costume, and it was listed in the catalog as Sponge Robert, <laughs> which I think is like <laughs> nice. Good try. Please, y'all. Sponge Robert was my father. <laughs> I'm Bung Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, there is no true one Bung Rob. It's a title passed down from father to son. Yeah. That's why at the end of every season of SpongeBob SquarePants, he goes through a regeneration and he's voiced by a different actor. The problem is, they're probably, it does sound like they were dunking on you for being crabby. Yeah. The problem is, if you had spun around on them and be like, uh, excuse me, the Krabby Patty is a burger, not even a character, you would have like reinforced <laughs> yeah. pretty hard, I think, the, the patty. The crabbiness part of we the should pro- we should probably address the fact that this sounds like an incredibly toxic work environment. That and, is a- another thing. Yes, and that's not so much a funny joke as much as it is sort of a unfortunate reality. Um, mm-hmm. I, and, and not and not just because for the obvious uh, that's definitely tired, but uh, it also sounds like on some level these people are uncreative and unfunny and unfunny. Which SpongeBob character you can't is stop everybody? working? Ugh. You can't stop working at a place because the people in it are uncreative and unfunny. Like you will be job hopping for quite a while. I don't know. Now I'm self employed and work with myself, and I love it. Yeah, I'm so self employed working by my. I, I work by myself, and I uh, and uh, the people I work with are funny about half the time. Yeah, <laughs> I do not think that that is a good <laughs> metric. Um, wait, is that us? Hold on. <laughs> no, me. Oh, okay, like, so the the self dunk. Oh, I get it. There's three of us, so if we're all funny half the time, the show's always funny. Run True. the math. It, this is a. It's actually funny 150 percent of the time. Uh, I I I don't. I now don't who's know. a Krabby Patty? <laughs> okay. This this sucks, right? This is like a broader question about like I work at a workplace where people are bullies. I think a little bit in this very innocuous, like passive aggressive way, but like that's what it is, right? Like it's very rare that somebody is like pantsing people at the place they work. They just like. <laughs> set up these social hierarchies that not everyone gets the benefit of and that's that's that fucking sucks. Well, this is like the office, right? Like if I worked in the office, the office, the office, mhm. And I saw Dwight getting all of his things taken and picked on and bullied all the time. Put in put in jello? Put in gelatin? 
Um, and hey, Jim, can we not? Can we all stand up for Dwight for a second? Can and you, ask Jim to not? I saw can, you, can, I, can you not put Dwight's stapler in some jammy shake? Which is, of course, I the, what the British called uh, Jello and gelatin. And I'm, of course, I only watch the British version. I'll tell you the most frustrating thing about this poor question asker being called Krabby Patty is they sent a picture of themselves and they are a human sized starfish. And it seems to me right like there. it's just it's just right there. But it's there just was, right there. There was already somebody at work named Gatrick, and you just can't. <laughs> this is my friend Gatrick Bypass. <laughs> Would it be even worse if they were named Patrick and they were like, we're just going to keep calling you Patrick and then they didn't get to play they didn't get to play with me never play, play with me. never play by the way people in a work environment or any environment really the who would everyone be because inevitably yeah. in every media property there's always one jerk or asshole or disliked person and you're going to come around to be like and who would that person be and it's always mean always mean if you do game of thrones in your office you got enough people there eventually you're gonna run out of the humans and somebody's gonna have to be a very mean dragon or the or uncomfortable or throne the, the, the that, pointy I'm throne talk about how shitty that chair is it's a sure. shitty throne you think it's just like i'll kill everyone's family and make them do horrible crime and i'm gonna take over to get that big chair and the power that comes with it and you sit in that chair after doing all that stuff and you're like oh man can i get like a like a sumo beanbag <laughs> we have those yet <laughs> and, and <laughs> the really other thing i've learned from and this is just a side note okay with thrones if someone tries to make you the hand of the king you're gonna die so just say yeah. no just don't do just it just say no don't do it no, listen no thank you can you say i instead of krabby patty can i be goliath from Gargoyles, the TV show Gargoyles. <laughs> and they'll say like, what? And you say like, yeah, either Goliath or Lexington, one of those two from Gargoyles, <laughs> the TV show Gargoyles, um, I wanna be that one. And they say, but like, that's not really what we're doing. We're doing like a SpongeBob one. And then you, you know, roar, maybe you show up the next day dressed up as cosplay from Gargoyles, and it's like, oh yes, it's me, Krabby Patty, I guess. Roar. Even though I'm clearly Lexington Even though from the Gargoyles. Obviously Lexington. You know how I'm always like, perched on top of the cubicles? Yeah, perched on their cubicles and be like, I can be Bronx too if you want. How many other Gargoyles get Griffin named? Is that top of your head? Wait, hold on. Is that top of your head, Griffin? Yeah, I mean, they were all named after B Burroughs and shit. My voice sounds exactly like Jonathan Frakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't actually a gargoyle in that show. I don't remember. Uh, you did. Somebody didn't watch the deleted scenes. Oh, he got he got bit by a gargoyle turned into On the Blu-ray. Oh, okay. I did. I My memory of gargoyles stopped when they were still back in the past. So you talking about them being in present day New York. I was like, wait, what the fuck? I, <laughs> I forgot Travis, that. That's the, that's the pilot, bud. I know, but I, <laughs> I forgot all about that. And I was like, why would they be named after the Burroughs in fucking old timey England or whatever? And only now do I remember looking at the Gargoyles TV series, Wikipedia, <laughs> that it all took place in New York. Except for fucking Goliath, who was just like, I'm still Goliath. I'm still Goliath. Well, he's talking about Goliath Street, which is where all the big, strong souvenir shops are. Okay, we need, to, let's end, let's finish the episode thusly. Thank you so much for listening to, where did, did Justin go pee in the fiction? We lost Justin. Oh, that's like, oh uh, yeah, what, what is it? In the fiction, Justin has, uh, he's disapparated back to Hogwarts. Yes, he did a Hogwarts spell. No, he lost his thing, but Travis and I are jumping in here for some quick engineering work. Thank you so much for listening, and thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org, check out all the great podcasts there. Shows like Friendly Fire and The Greatest Generation and The Beef and Dairy Network and Judge John Hodgman and so many more. And if you want to hear the other stuff we do, you go to McElroyShows.com. Um, what else did we lose? <laughs> I don't what else did we lose remember. in the fire? Um, I think that might be. I think be. that's it. Yeah. Uh, just, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And then here's the rest. Oh, and thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for these four theme songs. Is it a departure off the album, putting the days to bed? Okay. Now here's the rest of the episode. Thank you to uh, John Roderick and and thanks to everybody for listening. We very much appreciate you. Um. Anything else we need to mention? Uh, I do want to say uh, Moon Tower Comedy Festival coming up in April in Austin, Texas. Schmanners is Woo. going to be performing there. Uh, uh, I 
pretty sure the 18th, April 18th, uh, but you can get tickets bit.ly slash moon tower schmanners. S H M A N N E R S. You think you can give me a score me a ticket for that? No promise. Okay. You want that final? Absolutely. This final was sent in by Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. Very, very strong contr- con- con- contributions. Whoops. Thank you, Merritt. It's, uh, Yahoo Answers user Jimbo asks. Uh, uh, can can this site be downloaded? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. This is Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Following the news is hard and it sucks. How do you know which stories are important? Which sources do you trust in this post-truth world of reactionary journalism? I'm Brett Black. And I'm Travis McElroy. And we host a podcast called Trends Like These. We cover trending news stories. We debunk misleading clickbait headlines. And we always try to throw in a little bit of good news. In our quest for truth! So join us every week on MaximumFun.org or wherever podcasts are found.